Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and today we're doing something a little bit different. Um, I'm going to be installing this 80cc two-stroke motor kit onto this red bicycle I picked up off Facebook Marketplace for 80 bucks. I thought it'd be a fun little project as if I don't have enough to do already. So anyway, I'm going to go through this instruction booklet, figure out what I got to do to start and get back with you. So step one of the process is to remove the rear wheel from the bike. Um, I'm not going to show you that just because Every bike's a bit different, but it's fairly straightforward. You usually have one nut on either side. You can kind of wiggle it out of there. Uh, you might have to disconnect your brakes, but uh, we're doing this because kind of the whole first step is installing the rear sprocket, which is what's going to drive our wheel. So there's a few different parts to this. Um, I've noticed other kits are different. I will put a link in the description of the kit I used, but the few different parts are the two different uh, insulators here, I guess you'd call them. Nine bolts, a couple backing plates, and the sprocket itself. Um, on one of your insulators, you have to cut a slit in it, just like I've already done here. And this has to slide onto the inside of that. I'm not gonna do it with one hand, but it goes underneath in the middle of everything. And then basically the way this works, I'll show you a little video of it after, is this goes on top, the uncut insulator goes right behind it. And then you have the the wheel so that sits on there just like that you've got the actual spokes of the wheel and then on the inside you have this piece which sits there bolts go through secure it all and on the very end you've got on the other side of this you'll have the backing plates which act as kind of your washers that hold the whole thing together and then you also have your locking nuts on the end to secure it all together um, by the way in my kit on each one of these bolts there is a lock washer and a small flat washer. So I'm still in the middle of installing the sprocket here, but I figured I'd just show you a little technique because it is a little difficult. Um, what I did is I threw my inner piece, you can see it's kind of partly held up there on the inside, the one with the slit. So I just threw it down there. And then I had set the other insulator, the one that goes underneath the sprocket down on top of the sprockets here, lined it up so I had holes, clear holes all the way through the, for the bolts and then set the sprocket on top to line up with those holes as well and then drop the bolts through. So they were just sitting there. And now what I'm doing is I kind of reach my hand up under here without using these half moon pieces yet. This has just kind of got me started. I've kind of lifted this up with my fingers and you can see I've started two of the nuts down there. I've done that just to hold it there. Now I'm gonna go around and do that with all of them. Um, and then once they're all kind of lined up, I'll take off three nuts, start with one of the plates and go around and do that. Okay, so I now have my sprocket on my wheel. Um, you know, after lining up those bolts, getting those plates on and everything started, um, I just kind of went around in a star pattern. I used my little drill here with the wrench on the back to kind of get most pretty close. And then you just gotta go around and feel it and make sure they're tight. Um, you'll see if you look in there, there's not much of a gap between the two different spacers now. Everything's nice and tight, you'll see kind of the sprocket just kind of pushed through it because obviously they're rubber, right? So it bends around those sprockets a little bit, but you'll just kind of have to feel it for yourself. Um, I'm gonna now test it. It should be pretty close. I kind of um, centered it on this. I can see the gap around the edges is pretty even. So I'm gonna throw it back onto my bike now and just lift that wheel up and spin it and see if this kind of stays center as I watch it spin. And uh, you know, that's how you'll figure out if you do have it center. If it's not, you'll just have to loosen off a bit. Um, I shifted mine around a little, a little bit by just using a uh, piece of wood. I just set a piece of wood against it and hit it with a hammer to just uh, nudge it one way or another just to get it center. Again, all the bikes are a bit different, right? So yours might look slightly different than this. One more thing to mention on the sprocket, just make sure the teeth, um, you'll notice they're indented on it. See that? Um, make sure they go inwards towards the wheel. That's what the instruction says to do. It says it helps keep the chain closer to the to the bike itself. All right, now that your rear sprocket's on and the rear wheel is back on, it's now time to mount the motor. Now this can go very differently for some people depending on the frame of your bike and the thickness and kind of the shape and stuff. Uh, mine's fairly straightforward. I'm just gonna go through what I've had to do. So there are some special mounts um, for if your frame is an oval shape or something like that where you drill a hole through and you have one bolt that kind of comes through and holds it. I'm just using the standard mount and I don't even have to extend um, the, the threads there. I don't have to get bigger studs because, uh, I actually purchased this bike to do this project. So I found one that, uh, had kind of all the requirements to make it as easy as possible. The only thing I did have to do was up here, uh, for a water bottle mount, uh, there's these, uh, these screw holes and I had to grind down a couple. 
one there, one there, and there's a couple under where these are going to be. So for these to sit a bit better, I just ground those down to smooth it out. Um, the only other clearance issue I'm having is over here, close to the standard gear selector there. Uh, this gets a little close, but I can kind of work around that. And the other thing is on this bike, all of the cables for the brakes and gear shifter um, run underneath the bottom frame. And so here I just have to slide my little the other piece of this mount underneath all that to get it onto those studs there. But those are my only two problems. Other people may experience issues with the, you know, you need to use the different mounts in this kit. As I said, I'm going to put this kit, uh, the link to this one in the description, but it does actually have a U-bolt um, piece. So if you did have to mount it a different way, you actually have this adapter plate here where you can use it and the U-bolt to go around. Um, it all kind of explains in the instructions, but for me, I'm just doing it the simple way. Now that I've got my motor all tightened down on both sides, as I said previously, yours might look different than mine. I'm going to move on to fitting the throttle control. I've already uh, torn off the old ripped up uh, handle uh, comforters there, whatever you want to call them. Um, this part took me a little bit to figure out just because the pictures in the manual don't really match up with what you have. But there's kind of three different parts of the throttle here. So you've got this guy, which has an electric sh oh, electric start on it. I'm not sure exactly how that works. I haven't gotten there yet, but you've got this piece, which basically slides over this. So this is going to be your throttle, just like on a dirt bike there. You twist it like that. So it actually goes inside of this. That opens up, goes over the handlebar. This goes inside. And your cable here, your throttle cable, screws in there. And the cable comes out and hooks into this plastic piece and that's how it kind of you know pulls on the cable so i'm going to kind of fit that all together now it's kind of hard to show you me doing it just because you know i'm the one holding the camera here but uh it's uh, pretty self-explanatory once you figure it out this wraps around that and then you gotta also make sure you screw your cable into the hole there and wrap it around there and then put it onto the handlebars i'm going to do it and then explain to you how i did it and the best method now that I've got this somewhat together, it's time to uh, put it on. So as you can see, I've got the cable into the throttle piece there. Um, that little end piece just fits in there and it rotates and it holds the cable. And then you'll notice if I, one minute, throw that back in there, it sits like that. And as I turn this, it pulls the cable because of how it's sitting now. So we got your cable comes in there, comes in here, clips in there, and then turning this pulls the cable. Okay, so now this is gonna slide all the way over the handlebar, and then I gotta grab the other half there and screw it all together. Now I have the throttle mounted there. Those screws are tightened. Just be careful as you're doing those because they actually screw into small little nuts on the bottom here, and mine kept falling out. But anyway, it's there, it rotates and everything. I've also put on the clutch handle. Um, again, this is kind of a more bike specific thing. I've mounted mine kind of underneath the handlebar so I can still comfortably Grab it like that, my knuckles won't hit the top, and then I can still use the brake there. So now I'm just gonna put the cable into the clutch lever. Um, it's got this little piece that goes in there. So you just have to slide the cable through that piece, this, and then that end clips into the uh, clip on the inside of the lever. If you open it up, you can see it. So slide it through, clip it in there, and then you're good to go on the cable there. Okay, now on to installing the actual clutch line or cable here into the arm on the motor. Um, so there's two springs you have to use when you do this. They'll come in your kit. There's a small one and a bigger one. The bigger one is actually a heat shield. So the way this works is you throw the heat shield one onto the line there, and then this gets threaded into the holder there. Um, you can adjust that screw on the top to adjust its position slightly. It goes to there and it gets stopped. If you can see that with the lighting, and then this spring will actually sit here, keep that away from the metal to shield the rubber from the heat. And then what happens is on the bare cable here, your smaller spring goes onto it. And then you just have to adjust this. So oh, I just dropped the spring there, but pretend the spring is on there. Then this lever comes back here and it stops at one point, right? Because it now requires the force to actually disengage the clutch. So with your spring on there, unlike how it is right now, this screw up here gets loosened. This 
goes through the hole under there. There's a hole right next to where that screw is. It feeds through there with the screw off. And then you tighten it up, make it so that's holding there and tighten the screw. So that's gonna hold that there. And then when you pull the clutch lever, it pulls this in and engages or disengages the clutch, sorry. So I'm gonna put the spring back on, screw this through uh, with two hands, and then I'll show you what I mean after. So as you can see, I've got it all hooked up here. Um, so as I said earlier, you've got the heat shield spring that goes on this side and it rests kind of against the motor there just so this doesn't melt. Then the wire feeds through this, doesn't screw in at all. Then you've got your kind of tension cable here. And then this uh, gets held on by this screw here. Um, that's what kind of took me the longest to do this. Basically what I had to do is I grabbed the cable over here with needle nose pliers while it was loose, pulled it as far as I could to compress the spring a little bit, make sure this was back as far as it uh, could be before the uh, clutch gets disengaged so it kind of hits a wall there, right? And so now in its current position, if I were to try and move the gear with my finger, it doesn't move. And then if I go up here and hold the clutch lever in, See, it pulls it in and the gear does move. Um, I did test it. One thing you, you should test that, make sure the gear moves with the clutch pushed in and make sure it still moves when you push in the clutch and you lock it onto whichever level you're gonna use. I'm using the highest one there. So with it locked on that level, if I bring you down here, this gear does move. You might not be able to see it because of the lighting, but it is moving there. So. That means it is working fine. So I'm gonna disengage that again and move on to the next step. Okay, so I've mounted my tank and my coil. Uh, they both mount very similarly. Uh, they just use a nut, a lock washer and a washer, and then these kind of rounded brackets and then the same thing on the other side. Um, what I did is I just kind of set the tank there and then uh, kind of tighten them evenly to try and keep the threads as even as possible here, just to keep everything even, same on the front. And then, you know, it's tight enough now where it, uh, it's not going to move. Um, you will bend these a little bit. You just got to keep going until it gets tough. Obviously don't over tighten them. They're just small nuts. And then very similarly for the coil here, which is just a single set of the exact same thing. Um, you can also use a zip tie to put that on there if you don't feel like using that, but I'll probably use the zip tie as well just to make sure everything's there. Um, next goes to the wiring. Um, it's very, very simple. So you've got the set of wires, this one is coming down from the kill switch up there. Um, I thought that was an electronic start earlier, but it's actually a kill switch. Um, that set of wiring comes down here, and then you've got the two wires that comes out of your coil, and then you've got the three wires that come out of the motor. Very simple, blue wire from coil goes to blue wire from motor, black wire from coil goes to black wire from motor. You'll notice these coil wires are kind of a double connector. That's where the kill switch comes in. The red goes to the blue, which is over there into the second side. Um, the slots were a bit big for on my in my kit. Uh, so I just took a piece, a pair of needle nose pliers and tight collapsed that uh, connector up in there a bit. You gotta remove all, just pull the sheathing back. I already did it. Um, yeah, and then I had to do the same thing on the black because the other wire that comes from the kill switch is black and it goes into the black. So I'll get a nice little shot of it there. Just remember, you're gonna have to collapse the connector for the, um, for the the smaller uh, piece that comes from the kill switch so that's all it there now i just have to uh you know zip tie this all to the frame maybe throw another zip tie around this to keep it there um and you know just clean it up make sure it doesn't get in the way of your legs and the wheels and then you've just got the plug wire which goes into the plug which will sit right up in the hole there um one thing about the plug i'm going to put it in next but i believe this connector based on the instructions this, um, the plug wire that comes with this kit does not need the little hat on the plug. So you gotta unscrew this. It was originally on there. You just unscrew it and you got the bare metal there. And you can see here, I've now uh, thrown some zip ties on here. I haven't cut the ends off yet, but I've thrown some up here just to kind of route everything a, a bit nicer. Um, two things I forgot to mention, as you're routing the wiring, be cautious of the exhaust. Let me just grab it here because it mounts in just like that. So you just wanna make sure your wiring is pushed enough that way away from the exhaust so it doesn't melt. Um, and I think one other thing I forgot to mention, there's also this white wire. This white wire is for any uh, auxiliary power you need. So if you're planning on wiring up a headlight or something, which I think I'll do in the future, um, I think it provides 7.5 volts and 0.5 amps. And in the instructions there, it said anything 
over exceeding the limit it'll actually just turn off the motor so i guess that's all it can handle all right the next step is to shorten the chain because the chain that comes with the kit is too long for my bike and i assume it would be for most bikes um, it obviously allows the kit to be universal so the way you're going to do this is you're going to take your chain you're going to start this end down right under here and then rotate the motor over make sure your spark plugs out because this will make it a lot easier with your three quarter and your ratchet and rotate that and it'll wrap it around there and then you want to pull it out so you've got a decent amount of slack uh, take your other end of the chain and put it around the sprocket as i have already down over there and you want to loosely mount your tensioner in so it's just sitting on top of it and i put it to the bottom because i want to be able to have the full amount of adjustment to tighten it more if i need to so we're going to do this now that it's wrapped around everything I take this, my master link is just kind of sitting in here right now. I'm going to put them next to each other. And so right there, it would be really tight. So if I were to pull out the links from here that way, it would be really tight. So I'm going to go one back. So I have a little bit of slack in it because I can still adjust it with the tensioner and you don't want it to be too tight anyway. So now that I've determined, okay, that's how long I want my chain to be actually Got a little farther, I could go one more. But anyway, you, you gotta do it on your bike. I'm not gonna go too much in detail on you know, what length you need yours to be because it's gonna be different for everyone. Once you determine, you're saying, okay, this is where I need to, uh, to shorten mine to. So I'm gonna mark that link, uh, that uh, little stud in there, and then I'm gonna pull it to the bench and show you how to shorten it. Okay, to shorten the chain, um, I've decided I'm gonna pull out three links. I could go four, but I wanna try three for now, see how it is and I can always remove the fourth one after. Um, so I've gone one link, two link, three link, and then you wanna pull off those joiners there too. So this is the pin I'm going with. Um, I put it in my vise like this, so I've kind of folded the chain a bit and did it. So this is just barely on top of the vise like that. Um, you can just use the metal part of the vise. I've got these rubber pieces that I threw in just to not scratch up the train, chain too much. But all you're gonna do Take your eighth inch pin punch, line it up there and just hammer away. You can see I've already kind of started on mine. It's already starting to come out that side. So hammer away till it comes out and then you can rejoin here with the other end of the chain with your master link. As you can see, my chain's now on there. I ended up only needing to take out those three links. Um, I just kind of mocked it up, ran, it, uh, ran the chain through here as I turned over, over the motor and left this uh, the tensioner here loose and then just kind of got everything to a position. You can see everything's still very loose at the moment, but once I get the tensioner over here and I, you know, set it up how it's gonna be, everything should be fairly tight. Um, yeah, that's about it. Just one thing, when you're setting the tensioner, I'm gonna do it now, it's gonna be different for everyone depending on how your frame works and everything like that. And you know how many links you have to take out, but I'm gonna kind of try and allow it to pull the chain back out a little bit because when it's sitting up straight like this, the, uh, the chain does get a little close down here to the motor mount and a couple other spots. So, you know, you just gotta play around with it based on your bike. Okay, now that the chain is on and tight, I'm on to mounting the exhaust pipe. And I've got a little bit of a problem. Uh, I've got the exhaust close to where it's gonna sit. And uh, in its current state, the pedals kind of hit the exhaust. So all I have to do is just take this pipe, um, put it in your vise, use a couple pieces of wood on either side so you don't mess it up. Or if you have those rubber adapters for your vice like I do, use those. And I just have to bend the pipe. Uh, you just gotta use two hands and a bit of force and you can bend it over enough so your, it clears your pedals or anything else that may be hidden. So I'm gonna do that, then mount the exhaust. It took me a little bit of time to figure out the best way to bend this, but the way I ended up doing it was I did originally wrap the pipe in electrical tape to try and protect the coating on it, but I'm just gonna repaint it. I kinda stopped worrying about that once I realized how much force I needed. Um, I just kind of put it in the vise this way because I had to bend it to the side. So to get as much of a grip on it, I put as much of the pipe into the vise as I could. Took a piece of wood and hammer and just kept going at it. You can see I've got a good bend here. It did dent in the exhaust a little bit over here, but it's really not a big deal and it's something you can't really avoid. So now that I've got my clearance, I'm going to go mock it up to the motor make sure everything clears. Our next step is to put the throttle cable into the carburetor. So when you pull your cap off, you'll have these items in here in this order. You've got a spring and then you've got this piece with the needle in it. And inside there, you also have a little metal washer with a slit. So 
the way this has to go, I'll try and show you. Setting the camera up like this. You grab your cable, which I've got sitting right here. It has to feed through the hat first. I'm gonna screw the hat as far down as it can go to get as much out of it. So that goes through, you see the cable coming through. And now essentially this cable with the spring in there as well has to come all the way down here. You have to line up the gap in that washer as well, but this spring comes down here, clips around that edge and gets secured in to the needle like that. It catches on the little uh, ledge on the bottom there. You just have to make sure the, um, the washer gets put in place too. I didn't have it in place properly there. So basically, as I was saying, take your little washer, line the slit up with that washer, with the slit in this, run your cable through the full thing with the spring on it. So you're gonna have to compress the spring as you do this. So you, you know, you're gonna be holding this down. Sorry, one second, hold that down. I've got it all together here so you can see on the cable, you've got the hat and the spring sits right up in there and the cable runs through the little metal washer. It's hard to see, but it's in there and the slit is lined up with this slit. And then the end of the cable just hooks around the edge there and holds itself there. So when this goes into the carb, I'm gonna put it in there right now. You have to line up the slit with the, with the little nub you see in there. So just look at it, put it in the right direction. Make sure it feeds all the way down. Tighten it on, one second. So now, you can see you have tightened it on there. You just have to look in there. There's a little notch about halfway down this tunnel. You just have to line that slit up with it. And then you see the needle piece is in there. And if I put the camera on there as I rotate the throttle, you'll see it, you'll see it move up and down. Okay, because that's what allows the gas and the air into the motor. So anyway, now that it's in there, just make sure it's all straight. Um, the instruction booklet does actually do a pretty good job at explaining how that all goes together if you didn't get it from my video. But uh, now I got to just clamp this onto the motor. Um, it's a good idea before you do this to route your cable wherever you're going to have it. So I've got mine somewhat where I want it. I'm going to mock this up, see how it looks, and then clamp it down to the motor. So it has been a couple weeks since that last clip there. I've uh, ridden around on the bike a little bit. It's all muddy, as you can see. Um, I've probably done about 30 kilometers on it, but I'm just gonna kind of go through the last final steps after mounting your carburetor that need to be done to get the bike started um, and just anything to look out for. So the first thing uh, after the carburetor is mounted, you can see mine's on there. Um, you do have to run your fuel line to your tank. Um, so you have to make sure you've put the valve in there. Um, the valve pointing this way means it's on and that means the gas is off. So make sure you tighten that on there. And then I just took the line that came in the kit, uh, cut it and uh, just cut it so the inline fuel filter can be connected. You can see my little MacGyver thing I did here because this uh, inline filter did start to leak a little bit on me. Uh, I would recommend actually getting rid of this and going to a parts store and buying a metal one or one a bit nicer because it's not the greatest. I'm going to replace mine. But uh, yeah, that's that. So to get the bike actually started um it did take me a little bit of playing around to uh to get it there i'm just going to go through a couple tips um one obviously make sure you fill your tank with your premix uh oil and gas uh use 91 octane or whatever high octane you have available uh it does say in the instruction manual what uh, ratio to use uh there's a different ratio for the first 500 kilometers on the bike versus the uh, after those first 500 kilometers, it's kind of the break-in ratio. So look at the instruction manual for that. But uh, fill that up, make sure your gas is on. And then you have to put in your clutch. And the way it starts is uh, you start pedaling the bike and then pop the clutch. So you let go, which gives a direct connection from the motor to the wheel. And it's kind of like bump starting. You just continue to pedal and it'll fire up the motor. A couple things you have to make sure of first before you do try to start it. The choke has to be on a bit. Um, I did struggle with that for a little bit. Um, depending on the weather and how cold it is, you don't need this choke on all the way. It does say to put it all in all the way, but mine would not start. Um, I had to put it at about half for it to actually start for the first time. Um, the other thing too, prime the carb before you start it every time. You've got the, uh, the little prime button here, so that'll hold it, pressing that, do it about twice. It'll allow a bit of gas into the carb um, to prime it, you know, let it fire. Um, couple things you will have to do as well so as you're starting it hold this this is your accelerator your throttle right 
you know, give it a bit of throttle as you start it for the first time and every time. And you will have to play around with the throttle adjustment. Um, I spent quite a while getting it to where it will kind of idle right when I'm holding it a bit. Um, so you've got two different adjustments. Uh, you've got this here, pulling this out more. We'll set the cable in a tighter position to begin with, so it'll have a higher idle. And then same with down here, I had to adjust that out a bit. So I've got both mine adjusted out quite a bit actually for it to get to a decent idle. Um, yeah, and that's mainly everything to get it started. Um, once it's running for a bit, this choke does automatically kind of turn itself off, but I always watch it and just get it all the way down before I do start to ride it. Um, one thing to note after my about 30 kilometers of riding, uh, the chain does seem to be a little bit of a problem. Um, it has kind of loosened off a little bit on me. Uh, so I'm going to have to remove another link, but that's just from, it's a brand new chain and it's now kind of been stretched a little bit. So I, my, I did verify my tensioner hasn't slipped or anything. So it's definitely just the chain stretch. So I'm probably going to have to remove another link out of that. Um, and then you can also see that I did add on the uh, chain guard. So depending on your bike, you might have to grind off a little bit or cut it. I had to cut it a bit here and then I just zip tied it to the back here and it goes on to, there's a little stud up here that it bolts onto up on the motor. So it sits on there very tightly. Um, and I think the last thing that I never showed in that other clip was just my exhaust. It did take quite a bit of time and bending to get this just right. So it would bend around the frame here and not hit the pedal. But, uh, other than that, uh, th this whole install was uh, pretty good. Um, I'd, I'd say the exhaust was probably the part I had the most, the toughest time with. It's the modifications that'll always be the hardest depending on your bike. Um, this type of bike is the best for this. A big, wide V-frame bike. You know, if you have other bars in here, it does kind of get in the way. But uh, yeah, that's about it. it. It was a nice, fun project and I do enjoy riding it. Um, if you have any questions aside from what I've explained, please feel free to ask in the comments and have a good day.